Hey guys, Chris here again with Project Nerf, and today I'm going to show you how to make this. Do this. Let's do it. Alright guys, so we've got this uh, knockoff stripe up here with the select fire kit in it. We've got a few hurdles uh, to jump through with this blaster. Uh, the first of which is going to be the abysmally small battery tray. And uh, a thumb screw would be pretty helpful there as the screw goes flying across the bench. There we go. Um, that's small. Well, it's real small. Um, so we might can do a little carving and fit a battery in here, but it doesn't really look like it uh, the way this one's configured. It runs on this uh, 650, or 18650, I apologize. Uh, lithium ion so it's a uh, Would be the equivalent of a 1s Obviously that's going to be an issue trying to hook up a 2s lipo uh, Because the board in this thing you know, it was manufactured in China It's probably as cheap as you can get and I'm sure will not handle the voltage from a 2s lipo fully charged This is going to make about 4 4.2 uh, Again the equivalent of 1s uh, and a fully charged 2S makes it right around 8.4 at peak charge. So um, we're definitely going to have to put a butt converter in it to run the control board on. But that's going to maintain that abysmally slow rate of fire uh, that everybody's fussing about. I'm not too worried about the flywheel performance. Uh, we'll split our circuit like we normally do. And uh, you know, run wires direct and uh, set up upgrade motors in here. So no problems there. Um, other than that, it's just going to be really a matter, guys, of finding a hole to, uh, finding space in this thing to put everything in. So, uh, let's get it cracked open, and, uh, we'll go from there. All right, a couple of things here. Uh, this little black rail that was on the top right here, that's got to come off. And I just tapped it once or twice with a hammer, and it let go. I don't know if it was on there from the factory, or if I put it on there when I did the kit. But, uh, not here nor there. Definitely got to come off, or the shell won't split. Um, all the screws are the exact same size, which is great. I like that better than a stock stripe, to be honest. And we should be where we can take this thing apart. Okay, let's take a look in here. Um, and see what we got going on. Uh, that looks hauntingly like a uh, stock strife cage, which is great. We're going to check that in just a minute here. Let's get a few parts out of here. And there's definitely more room inside the blaster as I'm looking at it uh, than there is in a Strife. Um, particularly if you look down in the handle here, um, this goes a little deeper, but then um, this area is opened up more. Definitely in this area here where the wild water channel is at. Um, definitely a little more space in there. Let's see if we can get the cage in the front end out. There we go. Okay, kind of cool. It's got the uh, rubber O-rings down here uh, to seat the bottoms of the motors in. Um, it's even got a, uh, a textured flywheel on it, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, probably hang on to those for another day. Um, plastic pin in the, uh, the access door instead of the metal one that the Strife would come with. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull the, uh, the mag release out to this point that has been the only screw, uh, that's different. We're going to get the trigger out of the way. Um, 
no return spring on the rev trigger, uh, which is a little disappointing. Um, but, uh, yeah, all in all, it's not too big a mess in here. I'm going to take a couple of screws out to get this pusher mac out because we're definitely going to have to play with that. All right, so... Uh, even the cage screws, uh, they're a little bit different. They're a little sharper, a little pointier. Maybe a hair longer, not much. But yeah, um... Come out! Give me one of those builds. There we go. Alright, so for the sake of this, we're just going to go ahead and snip the wires to the cage because we don't need them. And let's grab a stock stripe cage and see if it fits in there just to say that we did. This is a, uh, one of the worker canted cages, and it's clear. Yeah, I don't know how, how well you can see it. Uh, where I've got it set, and the two rear nubs line up, and the two front ones are just a little bit too far forward. Again, I don't think that's anything we can't, like, bend into position like that and, uh, and make go. So, yeah, um, we, can, we can put a stock Shrife cage in this thing uh, with a little finagling. Oh, that's cool. Um, extra good for our performance end of things. Alright, let's get the rest of the guts out of this thing and see what she's got going on. And then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Alright, so we got it out. There's two screws that hold the board in. The switch for the select fires on the bottom side. Uh, you can see where we cut our motor leads off. Our battery leads are uh, big, heavy ones, so that's good. Um, red and black leads also running off to the pusher. Now, this is a very interesting pusher mechanism because it's uh, it's completely self-contained. So, I mean, ultimately, I don't know how well that'll hold up over time. Okay, and then our switches over here, we have our rev trigger. This one is the fire trigger, and then this one is the pusher catch for the select fire um so when the uh tail of this comes back here at the end of my finger it actuates this little rocker switch right here and i guess tells it how many uh darts it's fired how many times it's gone off so oh uh, that's good so uh other than that you know it's pretty pretty simple and straightforward tear down uh nothing too fancy going on in there so Here's what we're going to look at doing, guys. Uh, obviously, again, we're going to have to put a butt converter in here uh, because our 2S, I'm sure, will just torch this board. But that means that we're going to be running the same 4 volts, approximately, uh, to our pusher motor. So what we want to do is get this motor out and test it on that voltage and see how fast it spins uh, versus possibly one of our, uh, possibly a Tamiya or something like that. If we can use a 3-volt a motor... Uh, that's faster than this one to increase that rate of fire and then use our split circuit to run a uh, high performance cage and wheels uh, We'll be good to go with this thing. So let's get this pusher mechanism opened up uh, Take a look at what's going on in there get this motor out and uh, rev test it here with our tachometer and uh, see what it turns versus uh, uh, Another motor that I've got in stock Now what we're gonna do here guys is Use my tachometer and this flywheel you can see a Paint a little silver spot on it because the stickers that come with these things don't uh, stick particularly well to that smooth surface. So we're going to pop this pinion gear off of here, hook this thing up to a battery, and test it for rev. And then uh, we're going to try out uh, on another motor and see if we can get a little more velocity out of it that way. So uh, let me get some wires clipped, get everything set up, and I'll bring you back for that test. Okay, guys. So uh, sat around one weekend with a, uh, an adult beverage and made up a bunch of different kinds of these. These are... Uh, just adapters. So this is a JST to uh, 
XT60 that I can plug into my box here so we can plug the stock battery in because that's what we want to run these motors off of for the sake of this test. So you can see I've pulled the pinion gear off of the stock motor in this thing and I put my flywheel on it. And again, hopefully it shows on camera, there's a uh, spot painted on that flywheel that the uh, tachometer can read. Uh, I've got a Tamiya Sprint Dash laying around that's going to run on the same voltage and we're very curious to see what kind of uh, what kind of revs uh, these motors are turning so let's go ahead and get it hooked up and uh, see what we can get here All right, so we're going to plug that in we're going to plug the stock battery in um, it's got a pretty good charge on it it's 384 so that's certainly nominal voltage it's not 100% heat but it's not too bad And hook this motor up to the leads. Hold it up in here, flick the switch, and it goes. All right, so we're going to fire this up, put the tack on it, and see if we can get a reading. Readings are all over the place here. Uh, so, but I was seeing a lot of 12s and 15s in there. So we're going to pop the flywheel off. Hey, come off of there. There we go. And we're going to put it on the Tamiya motor. Alright, there we go. Get it hooked up. And see if we can get a different reading. More importantly, a different sound. Uh, that one definitely sounds faster. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm getting in the middle 20s on this one. Don't know that it revs up any faster, but it's certainly a faster motor. So we're going to go ahead and try this in the uh, auto kit and see if we can get a little better rate of fire out of it. All right, Tamiya motor's in it. Um, let's see if we pick up any rate of fire out of this. All right, so here we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can live with that. That's not a super fast rate of fire, but it should give us a little more responsiveness and, uh, you know, uh, give us a little more on that full auto. So, uh, anyway, that's not too bad. If we get a even faster motor, um, we could probably pick it up a little bit more, but that's what I happen to have laying around. So we're going to go with that. All right, so now that we got the gearbox sorted out, and I think we're going to get an okay rate of fire out of that. It's not going to be grand. Uh, what we're going to do uh, with the inside is take this uh, worker cage for the strife that I, uh, where we were testing the uh, Neo Badgers versus Fangers. This is Fang revamps, by the way. Um, so it's already set up, so all I have to do is just uh, furnacle these posts a bit and screw this thing in, and we'll be good to go there. All right, the stock motor we're going to get rid of that that goes to the bin um space in this thing like i said we were talking about battery so obviously what we're going to do here i'm going to use a hard mount style xt60 and mount it in the tail of the blaster there and then uh it's got this huge the ar one's got this huge stock so there's going to be plenty of space because the buffer tube is very short in this blaster um so there should be plenty of space in here to put our 960 uh, graphene and just run the wires through so we'll get that taken apart and taken care of and uh, I was just looking at things the uh, stock battery tray on it looks like it will fit our buck uh, pretty well and that fits in there is a very nice friction fit actually so we don't have to worry about it going anywhere yep and that closes up so there we go um, 
the MOSFET that we're going to be using is just one of these little minis. I'll show this off if you guys haven't seen it. Little itty bitty one um, from out of darts. This will handle any set of uh, 2S130s he sells. So, um, and I really like these. And ultimately, we'll just park that thing down here in the handle somewhere. So, anyway, let's uh, see. Start making the modifications we got to do. The only things that I see uh, that we're going to have to mess with here is we're going to have to chop these basins where the o-rings were uh, for the stock motors we'll have to get those out of there uh, so that our fang revamps will drop down in the hole and yeah that's about it get it cut out for our xt60 and uh we should be good to go so anyway guys i'm gonna go ahead and uh start doing this stuff and i'll get back to you all right guys so i got all the wiring done and uh this is definitely an exercise in cable management again um, we would have had to run a lot more wire and all kinds of BS if we'd have used a big MOSFET, so I'm glad we used the little one. But, uh, let me show you what we got going on here. Okay, so in the rear of the blaster, we've rigged up this flush mount XT60. So, and it's got split lines, so two negatives and two positives. One set comes into the battery compartment, goes into our buck which I have set at 4.5 volts. I don't want to go any higher than that because I'm worried about torching the board. The leads out, run around and go into the circuit board. All right, pretty simple there. Uh, we cut the motor leads for the pusher motor and soldered those up to our new motor. Okay, the other set of leads from this goes to one side of the MOSFET. Okay. The other side of the MOSFET goes to the flywheel cage. The switch, we're using the original rev switch, okay, which we cut loose from the board and soldered it up to the MOSFET. So when we plug the battery in, this is completely independent of the circuit board. However, there is an electronic safety built in to this board. Okay, If it's not revving, it will not let the pusher motor run. So what I did is bridge the circuit from where the original wet rev switch was soldered up okay i just literally soldered those two terminals together so the board thinks it's revving full time uh and uh that seems to seems to do it so there's been some hot glue and whatnot let's run a test on it here and see if uh you know everything works okay so we're going to turn it to single shot there's our rev. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Burst shot. And then full auto. So yeah, uh, it works. Uh, the burst settings might not be quite as crisp as they used to be. Sometimes it's trying to double up and shoot two, and it looked like four on the uh, three shot. But yeah, uh, it's working, and it uh, seems to be working pretty well. Uh, that rate of fire is pretty happy. The only thing we haven't done yet is open this up and make room to put our battery in there. And uh, so, But uh, we're going to button this thing up and uh, take it outside and give it a test real quick. All right, so we're all buttoned up. I don't have the battery stock done yet, so we're just going to plug the LiPo in and hold it. All right, let's try single shot. All right, well, it doubled off those. Burst. All right, well, those are both shooting two, even though it was supposed to be a three-shot burst in full auto. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty acceptable, guys. I kind of like it. All right, guys, this was not overly difficult. I'm working on this stock mod. All right, so what I did is I took it apart. It does unscrew. You do have to kind of lever this piece off. Um, it's got a tab on the other side that slips over that. Um, but once you take that off, um, not, not difficult at all. Uh, the buffer tube, if you pull down on the uh, slide comes out of there pretty easily and uh, what we did hopefully you'll be able to see it I opened up the hole there we go in the 
buffer tube uh, to be wider to actually fit the XT60 connector. Just drilled a hole back here to run our wires through. There we go, there's that. This, there's a wall in the stock here and uh, on the corresponding side. So I uh, drilled and sanded that out so that the wire can come through. The battery's actually gonna set right in there. So, we're not getting too fancied up on you. If we set that back together, you can see I cut this off and I used a razor blade to do this. You could use your Dremel. Um, but we should be able to take our uh, whoops, 960 battery, or 950 rather, drop it in there like that, screw that cap back on, and boom, there you go, battery stock. So just take a couple screws out, swap your battery, you're good to go. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get my extender made uh, to extend this uh, to the back of the blaster, and uh, we'll be ready to rock. Okay guys, hopefully we're not getting too much glare off the board here. I'll show you what I did with the wiring. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. Alright, uh, obviously we put our battery connector in the stock. Alright, so we ran two sets of leads off of it. So we ran one positive off to the board, uh, off of this MOSFET, and the other one down here to the buck, like this. Okay, and then the exact same thing with our negative. So we had one coming here to the MOSFET, another one coming down there to the buck. Okay, off of the MOSFET, uh, the positive and negative wires went over the cage. So there's your negative. There's your positive. All right, so you get the idea where we're going here. All right, the outs on the buck came here to the stock PCB board, and that uh, terminal was over here. So literally, they're just gonna come right up here. Like that. Okay, and I set the buck, guys, to 4.5 volts output. I figured the board could probably handle that. Okay, coming off of the board over here are the wires going up to the pusher. Just like that, and uh, we didn't mess with that at all. All we did was swap that motor, and we put our Tamiya motor in here, which is a much quicker motor, and it got us a much better rate of fire. Coming off the board on this side, there's three sets of leads to three switches. Okay, you don't have to mess with two of those. Okay, so you had the lowest one, comes down here to the rev switch, and you had one here to the fire switch, and one over here to the pusher stop. Okay. Like that. That's how it was wired up originally. What we did, okay, was very, very simple. We terminated the wires from that rep switch. Let me fix that for you. Okay, and ran them up to the bottom portion of the MOSFET. So they're now going to run over here like this. And yes, it looks like a confusing mess, but it's really not that difficult, okay? Ultimately, what we ended up doing was cutting the main battery plug off of the board, okay, and wiring the output of the buck to that. And then we cut the main rev trigger off the board and wired that to our MOSFET. Okay, and that is the only modifications that we made to the wiring on the blaster. Okay, so 
There's one more thing I wanted to point out, and I said it in the video, but I know it's really hard to see. This connection right here where we cut this rev switch off, there's an electronic safety built into the board that if this is not pressed, it won't push. So what I did was bridge this connection. I just soldered these two pins together on the board so that when you turn it on, the board thinks it's revving full time, even though our rev is now controlled through the MOSFET up here. But, uh, and that's how you bypass that. That's how you get past that electric safety. You just uh, bridge these two together. You can take the wires and twist them together. Uh, again, I chose to solder up the PMs. But it, very, very easy mod. Um, like I said, the Strife cage does in fact fit it. We had to take the two front posts and kind of push them in just a hair. It wasn't much uh, to make the cage drop in. Other than that, uh, the battery compartment was a perfect fit for our buck. And then the, uh, the stock, as you saw in the video here, made a really, really nice spot to, uh, to put our battery. So, um, if you have any questions about the wiring on it or anything like that, uh, feel free to give me a comment. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call that a uh, big-time success. We took a $45 blaster that came with a sweet body kit. Uh, that was select fire from the factory, maintain that select fire. Does act up a little bit, uh, but due to our faster pusher motor, if we set it to single fire, uh, sometimes it doubles off. Like that. Our first setting. Seems to shoot four. But our uh, full auto rate of fire, well, much have much impressed with that. So, yeah, guys, if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button, click that notifications button so you can be advised of our future content. In the description box below, I will put links to our Facebook page, our Etsy shop, we got a few sweet blasters in there you might want to take a look at, and our fan mail address if you want to write something and send it in. Guys, until next time, this is Chris for Project Nerf saying have a blast.